how to motivate people with God's nature and grace and also with a reminder from the law uh, but the main motivation is God's nature and grace so that people will always say God is loving me God is blessing me God is responding to me God has a wonderful plan in my life and he is uh, listening to my prayer he is responding to me and blessing me that way people would have confidence in God and also they will enjoy God more they will have strength from God they will not be saying oh I cannot reach God's standard I'm, I'm too weak they will not be saying that but even if they are weak they say if I'm weak I ask God to forgive me and ask God to help me God will respond and, and, and God will be very happy when he repents so when we trust in God's grace we will not have fear we will not have fear we will say God is always happy with me when I trust in him when I follow him God always blesses me and he's happy with me so if we live like this then we have strength from God okay so I hope everyone will see that God is blessing us and uh, he wants to use us he motivate us to follow him to love him and he wants to bless us so if Christians live like that they will say I'm blessed by God all the time I'm living under the blessing of God I'm living in the grace of God I'm blessed by God okay God uh, bless you all so I hope you pay attention and and try to think through the messages with me I'm demonstrating with a few messages how to analyze the passage and how to understand it okay okay now uh, look for God's nature and grace in each passage uh, it's very important whenever we see any biblical passage we always look for God's nature and his grace and his work and uh, we look for how God has promised us his presence his blessing his strength his appreciation his reward so we look for this in the Bible passages so first we look for what the pastors tell us about God's work and grace what what does he do for us what is this uh, what is he doing here and his grace and what nature would God have to have in order to be able to do those things for us so what nature would he have to have when he ha you know uh, when Jesus came to heal people uh, what nature would Jesus have Jesus have the nature of compassion for the people and Jesus would have perfect health and also he can impart perfect health to people that he can give health to people and he cares about people he wants uh, to raise up people for God so he he want to heal people and then what is God's heart toward us God's heart is to bless us to heal us to strengthen us and what does this action tell us about his love wisdom ability and power so what does this action tell us about his love so when from the healing of Jesus we can see that he cares about people he he loves people and he has the wisdom to do the right thing at the right time and how to also uh, teach people the truth at the same time when he is uh, when he is healing people and he has the ability to heal people he has the power to heal people so we look for this this as questions that help us to look for God's nature uh, in a passage first we look at the work and his grace grace means his undeserved blessing that he gives to us so when we see his work and grace and then think about what nature would he have in order to be able to do those things for us for instance Jesus accepts the woman with the 12 year bleeding and say to her daughter uh, take heart daughter 
your faith will heal you. So what, that, what nature does that show? Now the work of God there would be the healing of Jesus for the woman. Uh, His grace also is the healing and also the acceptance of the woman. Uh, accepting her and saving her. And what nature would that show? It shows that Jesus has the nature of compassion. He has perfect power that He can heal people. He can um, uh, change people's lives. He can comfort people. He has the heart to comfort people. And what is God's heart toward us? His heart toward us is that He wants to be our Father. He wants us to be His children. He wants that relationship with us. And what does this action tell us about His love? Uh, he loves even a weak woman. He also loves every one of us. And He has the wisdom to say, daughter, take heart, daughters, to, to comfort the woman. And He has the ability to heal her and the ability to comfort her. Okay, now we're going to uh, demonstrate how to do it. Okay, demonstrate how to, uh, how to apply it to different passages. This passage is Romans 5.8, but God demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So God demonstrates His own love toward us. God shows His love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us before we be believe in Jesus, before we uh, appreciate Jesus, before we want to follow Jesus, already Christ died for us and before we were born already Christ died for us. So these are some questions to help us think about the passage, to think about this passage. Now in the assignment I give you, please uh, choose one passage or a few passages and explain the passage and find out God's nature and grace in the passage and also explain why people, why some people don't get that grace and nature of God in their lives. And then how we can live out God's nature and His grace in our, in our heart. So we, uh, a few points we can think about. First, to explain the passage. When, when we preach on a passage, we want to explain the passage. Second, we want to... Uh, talk about God's nature and His grace. And then third, we want to uh, explain why some people don't live out this nature of God and His grace. And then how, very important how. And then we challenge people to live out God's nature and grace. So in this passage, we ask a few questions to understand this passage. Now in a sermon too, it's good to ask questions. Because when we ask questions, uh, then people will think. We don't just tell them the answer. So today I try to lead you to think instead of just giving you all the answer. So how is God's action different from human action? So when we think about this, we can compare God's action with human action. Now when people, when people see a sinner, when people see someone who commits crimes, uh, what do people feel? Very naturally, the people would dislike the people who have sinned or who have committed crimes and they will not have great compassion on them and they will say, uh, you know, it's worth it that you live your life like this, that you are punished. So people will not have that compassion. But God has that compassion so great that even Jesus died for us. So the difference between human and God is that human would despise the sinners, despise the criminals, but God treasures them. God wants to save them. God understands that people have sinned. So God understands that people have a sinful nature, so people have no power to overcome the sins. So the only way they can be saved and changed is God working in their lives to transform their lives. So God understands that and He accepts that. But people, it's hard for people to understand people and accept people and have the heart to help them. And even if they have the heart to help them, they don't have the ability to help them. 
So what is God's heart when He sent Christ to die for us? His heart is of compassion to save us and He would uh, put down our sins. He would, uh, when He sent His Son to die for us, He understands our sins, but He doesn't set His eyes on our sins. He doesn't just look at our sins. He will say, I know you have sins and I want to uh, just put down and not to look at your sins right now. I want to uh, see what I can do for you by sending Jesus to die for us. So that's God's heart. And what is the difference between God's nature and human nature? Now, the first question is about God's action and human action. God's action, He would help and save. But human action is they would despise and then God's nature is a nature of acceptance. He treasures people, He treasures even sinners. He wants to do great things for, for sinners. And human nature is that human don't want to do anything for, for um, God, uh, human doesn't want to do things for, for other human. They want to just look at the sins of other people. Okay, okay now so we look at uh, God's nature here. So the theme of the message, we need to have a theme for each message. How to appreciate God's love for us. How to appreciate God's love and also live out God's love. Okay. And God's nature and grace. First, God is full of love and acceptance. He loves us even when we don't know Him. So that's something people don't have. People have to know someone before people would uh, accept them. And, and it is hard for people to learn to like people and, and care about people and love people. But God loves us before we were born. So God is full of love and acceptance. He loves us even when we, when we don't know Him, even when we haven't, haven't done anything for Him. And two, He accepts that everyone has sins. He understands that people have sinned. He knows that humans are sinful and weak and have the tendency to sin. So He accepts that fact and He accepts us as we are. So that second quality is that He accepts us as sinners. He understands that we are sinners. He understands that we are weak. Now, but some people, some of you might say, I just cannot think of these qualities of God. I just cannot think of. So what one way we can do is to compare with human. Would human die for us? Would human do, uh, you know, be able, be willing to sacrifice for us? Are human able to save our souls? So human cannot do that. And can human accept us? No, he, human generally, uh, it's hard for human to accept sinners. Okay, now this also takes experience. If you keep working on it and do your assignments and send to me, and then I will, I will tell you more about, you know, how we can talk about God's nature and grace more. Okay, and then three, even though many people reject God's love, Christ still died for them. Even though most of the people in the world reject God's love, still Christ died for all of them. That, uh, that the Bible says that for God so loved the world, all the people in the world that He gave His only begotten Son to die for us. So these three points, first is full of love and acceptance. He loves us before we know Him and then He accepts everyone has sins. Now why do many people have problems with other people? Because they cannot accept that people have sins. They cannot accept that. They cannot understand that. So they, uh, so they when they see a sinner, they, they get angry. They say, I don't understand why you behave like that. They cannot understand that. Okay, and then three here. Uh, even though many people reject God's love, Christ still died for them. And then compared to human, human, when other people reject us, then we have a tendency to reject these people also. So that's human nature. But God is not like that. Okay, why many people don't accept God's love for us? So, for, so we want to ask the questions. If God loves us so much, why 
not all people accept God's love and even Christians sometimes Christians don't believe that God really loves us greatly why first people have bad experiences with people people don't easily forgive others and so they think that God does not forgive easily too so because from our childhood we you know people mistreat us and people cannot forgive us so it's hard for us to to accept other people and forgive people easily we cannot forgive people easily we have to take effort to forgive people because we have bad experiences with people so we uh, it's hard for us to forgive other people and two people don't treasure God's forgiveness because people you know uh, they just take it for granted they don't say that this is a great great gift uh, this talk about non-Christians and Christians also non-Christians uh, they don't treasure God's forgiveness and even Christians sometimes they they take it for granted they they're not very thankful so we want to learn to be thankful God you are so good and you are the source of all goodness and one day we can go to heaven and to be with you and we will have no more sins anymore and everything will be perfect there so it's great blessing to have God so I hope we all believe that now uh, some people say I just have problem believing that God really loves me because I have problem and I and they think that God is not helping them now we all have problems I had problems too and there were times that the problems were not solved uh, immediately you know God doesn't solve our problems immediately because God wants us to learn to trust in Him so uh, you know sometimes we say uh, we pray to God and say please heal my sickness and then the sickness doesn't go away right away but from all our experiences we know that God blesses our life God has healed us in the past God has given us joy and peace so we know that God will continue to work in our life and we trust in Him even when we are sick then we'll have more confidence in Him and, and then with that confidence we have more healing and then we treasure God's healing we treasure God's work so we remember all the things that God has done in my life okay and then three people have not found the way to overcome sins and so they continue sin and sins make them reluctant to come to God because many people they are full of sins and so they feel very guilty and they are afraid to come to God so we need to learn to say God uh, you know even though I've sinned when I repent you for sure forgive me so I can come to you with confidence I can come to you because Christ died for me even when I uh, I did not know him when we were sinners that Christ already died for us so the reason why many people don't accept God's love is because they have bad experience bad experience with people and they don't treasure God's forgiveness and they have sins and they are afraid to come to God okay how we can accept and appreciate God's love first accept that we are real sinners sinning is our natural tendency so we accept that we are sinners so we don't feel so bad that we don't come to God many many Christians they feel very bad about themselves so they don't come to God but we say yes I know I am a sinner I sin easily so I repent of my sins and come to God and God is very happy when I repent of my sins and come to God for forgiveness and for blessings second accept that God is not like human he is full of love and forgiveness for people so accept that he is full of love he forgives us he died for us Jesus died for us even before we we uh, be believe in him when we were sinners so God is not like human he's full of love and forgiveness is Christ if Christ died for us before we believe in him he will surely continue to forgive us when we repent of our sins now many Christians because they have sins and then they say yes when I first believe in Jesus he'll forgive me but now after I've sinned so many times they are afraid that God might not forgive them but God's nature is that you know that 
He forgives all sinners when we repent of our sins and God is very happy. So, um, so He died for us already. He, he paid the price already. He paid the penalty. So we all can be forgiven and we can rejoice in God. Christ died for me so I can rejoice in Him and I continue to believe that He forgives me and I continue to respond to Him to love Him. So then we learn to appreciate God's love and forgiveness for us. And then we say, wow, God is love. God's love is so great. He loves me all the time. I thank God that you are so wonderful. I thank you. I thank you. I appreciate God. So this Bible verse, uh, when we see that Christ died for me even when we were sinners, then we say, God really accepts me. God really forgives me. God is willing to help me and bless me even when I, am, I was reluctant to follow Him, even when I, I was sinning. God still has the heart to forgive me. So then we are motivated to, to follow Him. Now I want to say that I'm not expecting you to write very complicated messages. Don't uh, think of writing complicated messages. Just write simple messages about God's grace and His love and His forgiveness in this passage that He willing, He willingly died for us. And we can now in the preaching we can compare to human. We can say if we have offended someone, if we have uh, stolen money from somebody. Now, of course, Christians should not do that. But if that happens, if we have stolen some money from someone, will the person forgive us? It's hard for him to forgive us and hard for him to trust us again. But God is different. So when we compare human to God, it's very different. That human is hard to forgive people, especially big sins, serious sins. It's hard for people to forgive. And then it's hard for people to want to help sinners. But God is very different. So when we understand that, then we can all rejoice in God and appreciate God. The, the, the purpose of our messages is that people like God more and more. They trust in God more and more. And they say, God loves me so much that Jesus died for me even when I was a sinner before I believed in Jesus. God, Jesus already died for me. So I appreciate God. I want to follow Him. I want to appreciate Him. I want to uh, uh, enjoy Him. So this is, so this is, uh, you know, uh, how we motivate people to enjoy God's love. Okay? So that was the first message. It doesn't have to be complicated. Now, if you're preaching this message, we are preaching to people who think that they are not worthy. So we can have an introduction. Now, I'm, I'm presenting this message, preaching this message in a simple way uh, to guide you. If we want to preach on this uh, verse to say that, For God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So you will want to preach about that. Then we can have an introduction like this. That many people are afraid to come to God because they say, I've sinned. I have committed adultery. I have dirty thoughts. I have uh, stolen money. I have done all these terrible things. And, and then many people are afraid to come to God and they say God will not accept them. But this Bible verse tells us that even when we were sinners before we believed, before we repent, God already loves us and sent His Son to die for us. So God doesn't wait for us to be repentant in order to forgive us. He already prepared the way of salvation for us while we were still sinners. So that shows that God really forgives us. He wants to forgive us. He wants to give us salvation. So we can all come to God with confidence. So we can all come to God and say, I know when I repent, God is very happy because God already loved me before I believe in Jesus. So this is the application to help people to understand that. Even when we sin seriously, God is willing to forgive us when we repent. Now, we also want to add this, that uh, the reminder and the warning from the law that if we continue to sin, you know, uh, 
more terrible things will happen can happen to us because sins can break destruction in our personal relationship in our personal life in our and in our relationship with God so there is destructiveness in sin that he who sows to the flesh will from the flesh reap destruction he will reap destruction even though when he repents God will forgive them but there will be destruction so we don't want to sin uh, because sin will bring destruction even if uh, when we repent God will forgive us and so we remind people don't sin but even if we sin God is very happy even when we sin God is very happy to forgive us God is very happy to to come to bless us uh, the way I'm I'm teaching this God's nature preaching method is basically from any passage to find out God's action, God's nature. Find out about God first. Before